Chapter 1 Cyber Magic Introduction An introduction to the Ipsissimus thesis of Frater Stochasticos, square root of negative 1 degrees, by ourselves. Abandoning conventional literary format, we present a terse and abrupt catalogue of notes, observations, provocations, spells and rituals, to challenge any aspiring magus with the wit and daring to play with them. In celebration of our discovery of six dimensions, and out of respect for St. Alistair Crowley, who pioneered the format we use here, we now adopt the conceit of spelling the art and science of the magus as magic. Commentary 1. We celebrate the beginning of a period of silence and our retirement from the roles of magus and pontiff of chaos with the release of this volume. We wandered the world for a decade and more as an I, seeking the secret magic of being. Then upon the realization of the legion of our doing, clarity dawned, mastery of the temple, wealth, honors, and power then followed more or less effortlessly. You do not have to sell your soul to succeed with off-white magic. You merely have to recognize the existence of your other seven. Chapter 2. Why Magic? Irrational. We find ourselves incarnate in an awesomely vast postmodernist universe of accidental origin amongst semi-intelligent apes grasping for emotional gratifications, power, personal identity, and answers to silly questions, whilst trading these commodities between themselves. Yet the recommended gratifications and socially approved identities seem such dull travesties of what two whole kilograms of brain might achieve. Worse still, the apes' gods and gods, for all their cosmic pretensions, appear as laughably parochial anthropomorphisms, abstracted from faulty language structures, compounded by the pack-animal urge to obeisance. Contemptuous of all the rubbish on sale, some attempt to create their own powers, gratifications, identities, and explanations, and call themselves magicians. Hubris, then, accounts for the best of it. But why not? As belief in one's capabilities self-evidently leads to increasing capabilities, magicians consider it worthwhile to believe in their ability to accomplish the impossible, even if they only succeed at this occasionally. Commentary 2 as nothing has any meaning other than that which we choose to give it, we must either invest belief and meaning in something or abandon the game and go straight to oblivion. In selecting beliefs, we might as well go for maximum entertainment, value, and capability enhancement, regardless of the so-called facts. For if a human really wants something, statistics count for nothing. Personally, we attribute much of our success to a generous contempt for the apparent facts which a science education inadvertently taught us. Spot the treble and tendre. Chapter 3. Ourselves. Multimind. Some philosophers and psychologists bemoan the disintegration or fragmentation of the self in the contemporary world. We celebrate this development. The belief in a single self stems from religious monotheisms, having only a single god. Let us throw out the baby with the bathwater. If you consider yourself an individual, in the sense of indivisible, you have not lived. If you merely consider yourself as a single being capable of playing various roles, then you have yet to play them in extremis. The selves must allow each self a shot at its goals in life if you wish to achieve any sense of fulfillment and remain sane. Commentary 3 The authors apologize in advance for any irritation and confusion caused by the use of standard chaotic grammar, which avoids all concepts of being, and uses we instead of I in recognition of the legionary nature of the personal multimind. If you still do not accept the principle of multiple selves, then consider why humans spend so much time at the temples of Venus, Luna, Bacchus, and Mars, trying to escape from their workaday solar eye selves. 
in pursuit of love, sex, intoxication, and violent entertainments. Chapter 4. Magic 1. Science and Magic. The following ten chapters augment the technical procedures and general theory of magic given in our two previous books, Labor Null and Psychonaut, and Labor Chaos, the Psychonomicon. Stochastico's Law. Any sufficiently advanced form of magic will appear indistinguishable from science. Commentary 4. Our language structures impose casuality as a mode of perception. Casuality does not rule this universe. Humans label events which they associate together frequently as casually connected, and events which they associate together only occasionally as coincidence. Personally, we prefer to consider science as the study and engineering of highly probable co coincidences, such as the tendency of apples to fall downwards when dropped from trees. We prefer to consider magic as the study and engineering of less probable coincidences, such as the tendency of trees to drop apples when we ask them to. Everything works by magic. Science represents a small domain of magic, where coincidences have a relatively high probability of occurrence. Half of the skill in magic consists of identifying probabilities worth enhancing. Chapter 5. Magic 2 magical attack. Attack by enchantment, defend by evocation. Commentary 5. Remember and use the fact that imagined magical attack creates far more casualties than actual magical attack. However, do not risk trying to divine the nature of a real magical attack, for this will increase your vulnerability to it. For defense, evoke or create a general purpose servitor, cybermorph, eidolon, Forget about such naive procedures as erecting astral mirrors or shields. These have little other than psychological value. Attack or counterattack vigorously with properly and sigilized enchantments tailored to create highly specific effects, the bullet rather than the grenade. Do unto others as they would do unto you, but do it first. Such secrets we can reveal, having retired from active service after many campaigns. Field Magus. Stochasticos. Chapter 6. Magic 3. Wand or Cup. Enchant Long and Divine Short. Commentary 6. Wand or Cup. If only one-fifth of your spells work, you have real power. If only one-fifth of your divinations work, you have a serious disability. Spells cast well in advance can take advantage of the copious chaos in the interim, but that same chaos will tend to reduce divination to a shambles. Chapter 7. Magic 4. Sacrifice. Don't sacrifice. Invest. By sacrifice, the religious attempt to invest in spiritual agencies. Magicians know better. They invest directly in themselves, cutting out that middleman. Sacrifice only those things which get in the way of desire not the thing itself. Commentary 7. Some neophytes imagine that you can conjure wealth by burning bank notes to the gods. Never insult money or blaspheme it by gambling, unless you want to banish it. If you want money, then sacrifice it only on opportunities which will make money. Treat money as a major god, for its capricious and awesome power rivals that of even love and war. Money acts as a vast, intelligent organism which lives by occupying part of the brain of nearly every one on this planet. Mammon seems far more awake at this moment than at many gods we could mention. Chapter 8. Magic 4. Magical Medicine. Paradox. If homeopaths knew how homeopathy actually worked, it wouldn't work. Overstanding. Homeopathy works by magic, i.e., the parapsychological effects of operators' intent. Homeopaths have to believe in bogus theories to achieve real effects. Commentary 8. The erroneous theories of homeopathy arose from the early purely empirical practices of immunization and an ignorance of Avogadro's number, which quantifies the number of molecules in a given sample. 
an understanding of the mechanics of active and passive acquired immunity, which came much later, would have prevented the development of such theories in the first place. Homeopathy has let magic back into medicine at the small price of demanding belief in a completely wrong theory by its practitioners. Spell Iatrogenic homeopathy apparently works well in black magic. The sorcerer antidotes the target with a potentialization of itself. Perhaps we should not have mentioned this. Chapter 9 Magic 6 The Fourth Equation of Magic Eidolonics PE equals P plus open parentheses 1 minus P close parentheses L exponential 1 over P where all factors lie on a scale of 0 to 1 and a line. PE equals the probability of accomplishing something by the use of an eidolon. P equals the probability of the event occurring by chance alone. L equals the quality of the magical link. Commentary 9. The Eidolon Evocation Conjuration Let the magician fashion a material basis for a general purpose cybermorph, sparing no expense or skill. Let the magician physically carry the material basis at all times close to the body. Let the magician mentally carry the astral image of the material basis to the point of clear hallucination during any spare waking moment and, if possible, while streaming. Let the magician, by profound effort of ritual, fantasy, and imagination, treat the eidolons, material and astral forms, as sigils for a named semi-autonomous sentience. The magician will create a reusable multitask servitor by such conjurations, for which the first equation's factor take an optimum unitary value. Thus only the problem of a magical link awaits solution in any particular spell of enchantment or divination at which the magician directs the Eidolon. Although the neophyte must learn the many and varied conjurations of the art and science, the master will usually prefer the greater speed and efficiency than an Eidolon cybermorph offers. Chapter 10 Magic 7 The Fifth Equation of Magic 0 equals the square root of s squared plus open parentheses ICT close parentheses squared plus open parentheses I squared CA close parentheses squared plus open parentheses I squared C B close parentheses squared where line S equals spatial separation T equals temporal separation ordinary time A and B equals temporal separation in two dimensions of imaginary time I equals the square root of negative one and C equals light speed note that this equation gives the psi spacetime separation between events in a six-dimensional Pythagorean form. Non-local exchange of information can occur when psi spacetime separation equals zero. Due to the large value of c, zero separations at terrestrial distances occur when t equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. Commentary 10. Clearly, squaring out the I factors arising from modeling time as an imaginary form of space and imaginary time as an imaginary form of imaginary space yields the following simplification of the full form of the fifth equation set to a zero value. S squared minus open parentheses CT close parentheses squared plus open parentheses CA close parentheses squared plus open parentheses CB close parentheses squared equals zero. Quantum non-locality then appears as the limited case where A equals B equals zero, and information passes instantaneously along light cones. Magic then appears as the more general case where zero does not equal the square root of A squared plus B squared. Note that the fifth equation of magic models both space and time with the same dimensionality of three. Do not panic at your inability to see the other two dimensions of time. You cannot actually even see the first one. More of this later in the Spin Warp chapters. Chapter 11, Magic 8. Null Path Enchantments in Six-Dimensional Psi-Space-Time. 
Figure 1 below shows the three dimensions of time with a circle of unit radius in the plane of AB. Enchantments launched by a magician at T sub 0 can act on the circle of probabilities at T sub 1 and may appear as changed conditions at T sub 2 when the magician arrives at T sub 2. Conversely, Retroactive enchantments can have the odd effect of apparently altering T-1 properties, so long as these do not have the effect of preventing the enchantment. This can result in a change of conditions at T sub 0. Commentary 11. Enchantments thus land at a distance in the future twice as great as the radius of the circle of imaginary time probabilities with which they interact. Retroactive enchantment acts on a circle of probabilities at t sub negative 1, not shown in figure 1, which then feed back to the present at t sub 0, as we can only observe the instant of the present in t. Any debate about what really occurred at t sub negative 2 becomes academic. Note that the probability circle increases in size with time by a factor of pi t. Thus, if tomorrow contains a million possibilities, the day after contains three million. And chant along. Note also that an observer at T sub zero can in no way observe or interact with so called parallel universes, represented by the shadowy circle in imaginary time at T sub zero. They may well exist, but they may as well not exist, if you see what we mean. Chapter 12, Magic 9. Null Divinations in Six-Dimensional Psi Space-Time. Figure 2 below shows the three dimensions of time with circles of unit radius in the plane of AB. Divinations performed by a magician at T sub 0 to scry events at T sub 2 or T sub negative 2 can only succeed if the magician can identify a dominant probability amongst the plethora of information in either circle. Only divinations which reveal unexpectedly high probabilities tend to count as successes. Note that you can only scry the imaginary past of an event at t sub 2, not the event itself. Commentary 12. The very act of looking in divination can tend to distort the probability of what you look at. Divination can thus act as enchantment in a way quite beyond the mere effect of self-fulfilling prophecy in the ordinary sense. Divination also becomes progressively more difficult with time, as circles of probability and imaginary time enlarge. We have never met anyone who could consistently divine accurately. Although, a huge market exists for those who divine poorly or merely pretend to. Oddly, the market for those who can enchant reasonably well seems hardly to exist probably because only those who cannot regularly advertise, and those who can use it more directly to their own advantage. Perhaps the same applies to divination, but we doubt it, on account of the foregoing technical difficulties. If in doubt, always attempt to force the hand of chance. Chapter 13, Magic 10, Retroactive Enchantment. Despite the ease with which this effect manifests in delayed choice quantum optics experiments, some magicians still seem to have difficulty in summoning the belief to make this work on the macroscopic scale. Try this experiment. Wait until you have lost something. Rather than conduct further fruitless searches, try and trick your subconscious into believing that you actually put the object in a particular place where you actually want to find it. If you have to, you can even use a location that you have already searched, but in this case you will also need to make your subconscious recollection of having searched that place as hazy as possible. Then, whilst occupying your conscious mind with some powerful distraction, anger works well. Go to the chosen location and retrieve the lost object. Commentary 13 the subtle mental maneuvers required for retroactive enchantment depend upon suspending conscious deliberation and memory, and will fail if you try thinking consciously about your thoughts. Compare this kind of will perception coordination with the hand-eye coordination of catching a ball. Both work best when performed automatically. 
If you ever succeed with a trick like this, and you wish to retain and develop the ability without going mad, then we suggest that you do not seek alternative explanations, but that you accept the belief that the past has some mutability. Or better, still that no real time past exists, but that the imaginary time past contains probabilities restricted only by the observed conditions of the present moments. Chapter 14, Politics 1. Chaocracy. It has taken us two million years to elevate politics from the level of a monkey squabble to a level comprehensible to a six-year-old child. Towards the end of the 20th century, the question, what will succeed democracy, seems as unspeakable as the question, what will succeed monotheism, would have seemed in the 14th century. Can nobody contemplate any advance upon the least worst of all systems tried so far? The problem, one, we have to delegate responsibility for government, as most of us have better things to do for most of the time. Two, nobody who wants political power should have it. Three, de-electable bodies retain power largely by maintaining the interests of the status quo, and cannot act with the impartial wisdom that the luxury of time to govern could allow them to develop. 4. Elected bodies abrogate much of their power to people who act as monarchs, and then waste much of their time and efforts in factional and fighting. Commentary 14. If we have any faith in the stochastic principles to which we owe our very reality and existence, then we should perhaps consider chaocracy. Let us select a legislative body by purely random means. Let us reward those so chosen with salaries which put them beyond corruption. Let us replace one half of those chosen by random means every few years. A chaocracy will contain representative proportions of all ages and sexes. A chaocracy will have the assistance of a civil service to advise it. A chaocracy will free us from the conflict of party political ideolo ideology excuse me, with conscience and free us from the distasteful business of casting our votes amongst professional liars. Let a chaocratic government debate openly, but legislate by secret ballot. Let the outcome of such vote act as the head of state, rather than invest one person with this power. We trust people's lives to randomly select juries as the only fair method. Should we use any less fair method for a nation or a planet? Chapter 15, Politics 2 Conspiracy Theory Nobody has unity of desire. The selves within the person conspire to fulfill their instinctual agendas. Such conspiracies spiral upward in fractal self-similarity through domestic, social, workplace, national, and international scenarios yielding chaotic outcomes at all levels. Conspiracies exist, all right, but fuck up mostly rules the outcome. Commentary 15. Conspiracy theory, like casuality, works fantastically well as an explanatory model, but only if you use it backwards. The fact that we cannot predict much about tomorrow strongly indicates that most of the explanations we develop about how something happened yesterday have, like history in general, a high bullshit content. Three things feed conspiracy theories. Paranoia born of the need for self-importance, the need for enemies, which comes down to more or less the same thing, the desire for belief even in malignant forms of control rather than in the reality of pure chance, chaos, and accident. Chapter 16, Politics 3 Conspiracy Practice Any conspiracy lacking internal conspiracies will rule its world. Only through absolute loyalty to each other can the few control the many. Commentary 16 The extreme simplicity of these statements belies both their awesome applicability to conspiracies at all fractal levels and the virtual impossibility of their achievement. In practice, the power of any conspiracy rises and falls in inverse 
proportion to the power of its internal conspiracies. Mutual guilt and bribery mainly hold together conspiracies, whose ideologies command insufficient loyalty, but this makes them vulnerable. Never join a conspiracy that you could possibly betray, because if you could, someone else will. Chapter 17. Politics 4. Tetragrammaton of the Illuminati. The diagram presented here in the book is of a cross. At the top of the cross, at the north point, is lawful. In the northeast is Christic. In the east is nice. Southeast, Luciferic. South, chaotic. Southwest, satanic. West, nasty. Northwest, Jehovic. Law. Tradition, order, Stacy's quo. Chaos. Innovation, neophilia. Nice. Altruism. Inclusive selfishness. Nasty. Narrow. Exclusive selfishness. Commentary 17. The occult technology of power. The Jehovic program of lawful nastiness dominates most psycho-political systems from the nation-state down the self-similar fractal ladder to the selves within a person. Such systems tend to maintain their stasis quo at the expense of surrounding systems or of subsystems. The Christic and Satanic programs have little overall effect as they expand themselves against the Jehovic program and each other, and few systems manage to display either permanent beastliness or saintliness. The Jehovic program can readily manipulate and control both programs to suit its own agenda. It can always use saints and criminals. Only the Luciferic program allows evolution, as the Illuminati well know. In recent centuries, the dominant psychopolitical Jehovic forces have come to realize that a limited amount of Luciferic creative chaos can give them an edge over systems, which do not possess it. We aim to give them a great deal more than they bargained for. Chapter 18. Politics 5. Liberty. Equality. Fraternity. How sweet but sadly mistaken. Our old formula sounds. Unfortunately, you have to discount fraternity once numbers exceed the maximum cohesive pack size of about 150 persons. This leaves equality at war with liberty, and forcing equality to compensate for the monstrous unfairness of nature destroys liberty. But total liberty leads to various forms of aristocracy and decay. Yet total equality leads to oppressive forms of statism and decay. However, equality of opportunity leads to a vibrantly chaotic and creative meritocracy. Commentary 18 Creeping statism, governmental interference in everything, and the absurdity of parity and equality of reward regardless of accomplishment threaten the wealth and creativity of every nation, and will abort any new renaissance in Europe if unchecked. No left-wing parties have any respect for liberal economic values, and most center- and right-wing parties merely promote a paterni paternalistic statism. Does it thus fall to the self-reliant students of the ruggedly individualist philosophy of magic to champion a certain measured libertarianism? Chapter 19, Politics 6, The Illuminati In view of the foregoing theoretical considerations, the Illuminati changed their tactics sometime in the 20th century, preferring to conspire against the Stasis quo at all fractal levels simultaneously and to hide and generate the resources, information, and occult technology used for this by dispersing it amongst many seemingly innocuous enterprises and even into enemy camps. Leaking conspiracies provide the best possible vehicles for disseminating both information and disinformation. The enhancement of the fuck-up factor in any enemy conspiracy subverts it far more effectively than direct assault. The Illuminati now structures itself amorphously and does not react to attack 
which would allow the enemy to structure the conflict. Rather, it attacks in directions chosen at random, and then runs away to fight another day. Many members of the Illuminati remain unknown to each other, or unaware of their own membership. Do you believe any of this? Do you want to make it happen? Commentary 19 we can only escape the bloody and ignorant nightmare of history by exploring alternatives which today look frighteningly weird. Amanitize the eschaton. Any which way you can. Shun entropy, but exploit chaos to the full. Chapter 20. Hearsay 1. Spirituality. Magic will not free itself from occultism until we have strangled the last astrologer with the guts of the last spiritual master. After decades of mourning anger at prevailing fashions and stupidity, we present something to offend everyone in the following heresy chapters. Never discard the negative roots of any equation. Always look at the dark side of any enlightenment. Commentary 20. Only contra-initiative absurdity commands belief. Never try to design a spirituality based on credible ideas. Start with something really idiotic. Denials of death and sex or magic often prove useful. For example, you can make yourself into a spiritual master very easily using the gobbles technique. Find a handy lie and just keep repeating it loud and long enough until people believe you. Language alone makes religion possible. The nonsense equation 2 plus 2 equals 5 has the effect of a virus which will undo the entire edifice of mathematics if left uncorrected. The false linguistic equations underlying paradigms of spirituality have a similar effect on thought. Exercise. Identify the erroneous linguistic equations, which create the following ideas. The supreme being, higher things, and spiritual values. Chapter 21. Hearsay 2. Predictions. 1. Chemistry undid personality. 2. Physics undid determinancy. 3. Biology will soon undo most of our preconceptions about human beings. 4. Memory modifications will eventually undo the rest. Commentary 21. 1. Psychopharmacy reveals that personality depends entirely upon chemistry and thus consists entirely of chemistry. In vino veritas, indeed. Chemicals can make you schizophrenic, ecstatic, depressed, extrovert, introvert, libidinous, celibate, aggressive, or passive. So much for the notion of essential self. 2. Today does not completely determine tomorrow, much less next week. We have awoken to chaos from Newton's sleep and single vision. 3. If intelligent aliens haven't shown up within a couple of decades, we will probably have made our own. 4. Memory defines identity. Think about it. Or if you can't, try reading Philip K. Dick. Chapter 22. Hearsay 3. Our glorious simian heritage. Obeyescence. 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 Offering your arse in submission to the bull ape of the troop. Kneeling before the chieftain. Penance and sacrifice to the shaman. Genuflection to the lord. Confession to the priest. Prostation before the almighty ape in the sky. Commentary 22. The expectation that we shall receive reward and escape punishment by acts of submission lies deep in our pack animal brains and contributes heavily to our hunger for spiritual masters and deities. It also endears that other arse-licking pack animal, the dog, to feeble-minded members of our own species. Chapter 23. Hearsay 4. Elitism. Our ancient Celtic ancestors said, Never give a sword to a man who cannot dance. We might well add, Never give a wand to anyone who cannot handle ordinary reality. Magic will tend to amplify whatever tendencies a person has. It will increase general incompetence in life, just as readily as it will augment competence. Although we have seen those who started off reasonably well organized and made a magnificent success of their lives with magic, we have observed plenty of unpromising cases taking a powered nosedive to disaster with occult assistance. 
Commentary 23 The best orders and the best books on magic make the neophyte work very hard to gain anything. For, in brutal fact, nothing of any value comes from involving people who do not pursue excellence for its own sake in magic. Magic does not offer an escape from ordinary reality. Rather, it offers a full-on confrontation with it, which one can easily lose. Chapter 24 Hearsay 5 The Abysses Obsession Sophistry Paranoia The so-called Oath of the Abyss, wherein the adept vows to interpret every phenomena as a direct message from the ultimate reality to his or herself, will indeed open several possible abysses, but to no constructive purpose. Commentary 24 Forget all that Golden Dawn and Thelemic stuff about the Abyss and crossing the Abyss. Three major pitfalls await the Traveler on the short and dangerous path of magic. The initial exhilaration of accelerating into each may for a time mask mounting failure in reality. The Abyss of Paranoia pays initial dividends in self-importance, but as this effective paradigm takes hold, things will really start to go wrong in a big way, and enemies will fill the spaces you reserve for them. The abyss of sophistry pays initial dividends in ease and leisure, but the more you imagine yourself innately and effortlessly magical, the less effective you become. See the following chapter. The abyss of obsession pays initial dividends in a hypertrophied feeling of meaningfulness. However, no insight can have universal application, and the areas it misses will eventually explode in your face. Chapter 25. Hearsay 6. Dropping the wand. Does the power of the way you live cause magic to occur effortlessly? Do you use true will as an excuse to do nothing? Do you think that even when things apparently go badly for you, your inborn spiritual wisdom and power have arranged an initiation for you despite your conscious desire? They may well have, but how do you choose to interpret the message? Do you no longer need your instruments and the technical procedures of spells and servitors? Have you declared yourself enlightened? Commentary 25 Damn your weak philosophies, a pox and a pestilence upon your despicable sloth and arrogance. Either give up now, tear off those adepts' stripes that you once won and join the New Agers, or pick up that wand and let's see half a dozen tight sigils launched with full gnosis before dawn. Chapter 26. Hearsay 7. Off-White Magic. The phrase black magician unfairly applies to anyone who has taken your lover or money by occult means. However, self-professed black magicians seem universally unable to fight, fuck, or even buy their way out of wet paper bags, despite fantasizing constantly about becoming powerful psychopaths. The high point in a career of ultimate evil getting badly scratched whilst failing to strangle a cat. Ha! <laughs> Those sanctimonious transcendentalists who profess themselves white magicians never do anything unpleasant without the very best of spiritual reasons, but spend most of their careers casting ineffectual spells and imaginary evils to no effect. An Averse pentagram scrawled on their doorsteps as a joke can keep one busy for several years. Off-white magicians require no spiritual or demonic justification for their acts, and can take your lover or money without leaving you feeling bad about it. Commentary 26 Such flippancy ill becomes Frater Stokastikos, who allied himself with the off-white tradition on account of its superior sense of humor. Chapter 27 Hearsay 8 Magus Chase the summary of a paradigm in a word may please those who like simple slogans like Thelema or Chaos, but underneath it all, a magician basically issues the challenge, Follow me! upon assumption of the role of Magus within an order. No stimulus to personal achievement can match the effects of a large body of people chasing you for blood. No other motive for assuming the role of Magus has nobility, but no honor attaches to those who will not retire when exhaustion or those who simply wait for their pursuers to lick their feet or crucify them. The retired Magus may take the role of Ipsissimus, applying the treasures won in the race at will, and shouting encouragement and unwelcomed criticisms from the sidelines at those who failed to realize what they had signed up for. Commentary 27. We shall mention no names. 
Chapter 28, Hearsay 9, Astrology Some star signs may seem more inclined to believe in astrology than others. In particular, those either born or nurtured with their intellect in feces make the best candidates. We once met an astrologer in a cast who had a perfectly rational reason for his broken leg. Commentary 28 The pseudoscience of astrology has no place in magic. Astrology has already died twice, once with the classical gods and a second time after the Enlightenment. The complete failure of contemporary psychology to create anything other than a vocabulary of intellectual rubbish has encouraged astrology to resurface. You can make money out of it easily. You can get people into bed with it sometimes. But otherwise, forget it. Chapter 29, Hearsay 10 New Ageism I could love it. If dolphins had as much intelligence as cats, and stopped trying to rescue sinking pieces of wood, if crystals actually did something useful other than grease the wheels of commerce, if the goddess had made animals taste less good, so I didn't want to eat them, if astrology could tell me anything other than the trite and the obvious, if whales could do something more impressive than merely occupy a lot of space, if corn circles came from enlightened aliens, rather than Wiltshire pranksters on cedar, if Chandlers could speak in hieroglyphics instead of pop psychological twaddle, if sharing caring non-sexist men could do anything useful in a crisis. Commentary 29 The hippies of 1968 broke the dress code and the sex code, stopped the major war and created a healthy disrespect for all forms of authority. Mysticism and music functioned as enemies of the state in those days. The starry-eyed idealists of today have submerged their critical faculties beneath a tidal wave of, slope, of slop marketed by those old hippies who now sell a user-friendly dilution of their original enlightenment. Chapter 30. Hearsay 11. Dog God. In domesticating the wolf, we have reduced the wild ideal grotesque parodies of ourselves, and so with our gods. Commentary 30. In the transmissible mental disease of god ownership, the victim acquires the megalomaniacal delusion that a being supposedly representing all of his most desirable characteristics actually rules the entire universe. Conversely, in the more minor acquired personality defect of dog ownership, the sufferer seeks emotional solace in a creature specifically bred to exhibit all of his own worst characteristics, such as easily bought loyalty and fawning affection, cringing obedience, alternating with loud emotional outbursts, and the tendency to bite the defenseless from behind and then run away and defecate in public. Dog owners prefer to play god to creatures like that rather than address their own personal and social inadequacies. Deus es canis inversus. Chapter 31, Hearsay 12, The Antichrist A vile abomination lurks in obscene luxury at Rome, hired to an empire built on industrialized slaughter and bureaucracy without culture, self-preservation at any price. The empire created a faith when its war machine failed, then hitched itself to any bloody imperialism to extend its power. The lords of Albion fought it for three centuries, and weakened but did not break it. Now, in desperation, it sends out its celibate minions to make the masses breed a pyrrhic victory by sheer numbers, self-preservation at any price. Commentary 31 The Pauline Church originated from the publicity work of a grotesque misogynist fanatic who never met the obscure Jewish religious figure upon whose myth he founded a cult. At the Council of Nicaea, some cr centuries later, a desperate Roman emperor had the doctrines of the now diverse cults completely rewritten, redesigned, and institutionalized as, any, as an instrument of the state. After the collapse of the military and the political wings of the empire, the religious arm began work on an empire of faith and fear. The papacy has never hesitated to compromise its principles, or to burn and torture its opponents or to ally itself with any bloody military adventure. Recently, including fascism, 
if it thought it would profit thereby, its vast network of confessor inquisitor informers allowed it to survive as history's most grim and enduring conspiracy. Like any organism that has successfully degenerated into a parasite, it now exists only to perpetuate itself at its host's expense. The cost so far? A hundred million killed, and history two centuries behind where it might have advanced to. Chapter 32. Hearsay 13. Fundamentalism. Do you feel confused by postmodern life? Unable to handle too much choice? Phased by information overload? Uncertain about so many gray areas? In need of some black and white certainties? That you need some simple slogans to live by? Intensely jealous of those who can handle modern life? That you need something to hate? Unhappy at flexible relative values? That the past offers more promise than the future? That the answer to your problems lies outside yourself? Then much that now pours from the fundament of the major religions may interest you, schmuck. Commentary 32 Just when we thought the antibiotic of rational enlightenment had finished off the worst of the theological viruses, along came virulent new strains to pollute and disease half the globe. Ah, well. Back to the lab. We cannot allow the exhaustion of modernism to occasion a regression to pre-enlightenment medieval world views. Esoteric thought frequently acts as a precursor of entire cultural, cultural paradigms. Thus, we must oppose the medievalism inherent in both fundamentalism and much of the New Age philosophy with a vibrant postmodernist chaosism. Or cowism, excuse me. Chapter 33, Heresy 14, Filthy Fun Oral sex stands as an enduring monument to human ingenuity, but the given proximity of the organs of generation and excretion explains much of human psychology and philosophy. Here in the diagram of a cross, the north is sex, in the northeast is four, the east is shit, the southeast is one, the south is death, the southwest is two, the west is food, and the northwest is three. Commentary 33. 1. Hygiene neurosis. 2. Dietary neurosis, vegetarianism, anorexia, etc. 3. Overeating makes as poor a substitute for oral sex as smoking does for breastfeeding. 4. Who has the most fun? A. Those who demonize sex as unpleasantly dirty. B. Those who demonize sex as pleasantly dirty. Or C. Those who go to the whole pig and reintegrate excretion into their sexual pleasures. Chapter 34. Hearsay 15. Immortality. If we had immortality, we would desire amnesia more. As we consist entirely of our memories, immortality would have no point. Paradox. Immortality for the human race would destroy the human race. If you meet an immortalist, you know what to do for your children and for the sake of your children's children. Commentary 34. Those who seek physical or spiritual immortality have not thought the issue through. Precisely, what of themselves do they want to reincarnate, or to go to heaven, or to live forever? As an eternally persistent memory would prove intolerable, we presume immortalists really desire some form of continuity of consciousness. However, continuity of consciousness arises only through a trick of memory. Herein lies the paradox. After a few hundred years, an immortalist would have either an intolerable burden of memories, enough to dull any experience, or would have discarded or erased memories to the point where continuity of consciousness had become meaningless. Chapter 35 Hearsay 16 An unfashionable hobby for many wizards. With a simple wand and chalice, you can perform the most chaotic conjuration of all, launch an entirely new person, and thus cheat death and throw bombs at the future. We sometimes wonder if the obsession of medieval and renaissance sorcerers with creating various golems and homunculi 
arose from their distaste at the sheer chaos and unpredictability of the simpler method of creating little monsters. Commentary 35 We say that we have had rather than that we have made or created a baby, as we cannot take responsibility for the unpredictability of the result. However, that very unpredictability supplies all of the delight and sorrow to the entire operation. How stupefyingly boring we would find clones of ourselves if cloning becomes possible. We do not wish to live forever. Our immortality sleeps soundly in a crib at the foot of the bed, sometimes. We have reconfigured ourselves with a liberal dash of chaotic refreshment and renewal while still alive, and can now, with the jest, face death with equanimity. Chapter 36. Hearsay 17. Machine Enlightenment. Exercise 1. Try to specify exactly, and in detail, any human functions that you do not believe a computer could carry out even in principle. Exercise 2. Try to specify exactly and in detail what humans mean when they use the word spirituality. Commentary 36. Paradoxically, an exact and detailed specification of any function will, in principle, allow a computer to perform it. Apologies for the trick question. Only the unspecifiable remains. But let us not waste time with mystification, although we could write programs to produce plenty of it for fun and profit. Any half-sensible answer to the second exercise qualifies you as a fully enlightened master. Congratulations! You can now dress up with the bullshit of your choice and sell it. Chapter 37 Hearsay 18 Hazards Warning! Psychic hazard! Warning! Mental health hazard! Commentary 37 for fun, gratuitous insults as a humanitarian gesture or to stimulate paranoia where appropriate, the magician may print and display copies of these warning labels where appropriate. Standard international form requires psi hazard warnings in black on a red background and mental health hazard warnings in black on an orange background. Chapter 38 Hearsay 19 Nothing Nothing is true everything is permitted. Commentary 38. Attributed to Asan e Sabah, note the multi-level oxymorons, paradoxes, and anontisms concealed within these statements. The second statement celebrates the bottomless well of human ingenuity, from which we have barely yet removed the lid. The flames of hell will doubtless lick out of it, scorching many, but only knowledge will awaken us from the nightmare of history. We can find three obvious meanings to the first assertion. 1. Nothing is true. Judge ideas by their relative usefulness, not against some imaginary finality. 2. Nothing is true. Nothing exhibits being, but everything exhibits doing. Only the sluggishness of perception, of perception and thought creates the illusion of being. 3. Nothing is true. Life, the universe, and everything takes an extravagant journey from nothing to nothing. Let us therefore applaud the nothing and relish its extravagance. Chapter 39. Here say 20. A Taoist Haiku. We believe in nothing. The chaotic void within, the chaotic void without. Between nothing and nothing, let us conjure great doing. Commentary 39. Any comment would mar the supreme simplicity of this haiku. Contemplate its every nuance. Use it before a ritual if desired. Chapter 40, Phenomenization 1. Time. Extrapolate your cosmological observations with classical relativistic theory and you will end up with such absurdities as the Big Bang and singularities in real time and space, which negate the theory you started with. Extrapolate with quantum chaotic theory and you will find that the Big Bang occurred with equal probability in imaginary time at every point in the entirety of space that we now observe. To phenomenize the apparent mass and corresponding characteristic light speed of a universe finite but unbounded in both real time and space. Commentary 40 
It should come as no surprise that we can observe structures within the universe having a greater age than classical relativistic theory predicts for the universe. You can, after all, travel any distance you like in excess of 24,000 miles around the finite but unbounded surface of the Earth without falling off. Similarly, you can travel for as long a time as you like around the four-dimensional hyperspherical surface which constitutes this universe, although as on Earth you cannot ever arrive at the same space-time locus twice. The universe does not have any meaningful real age, rather it has a temporal horizon of the order of ten to the tenth years at all points of space-time. Future generations will look upon the question of the real age of the universe with the same amusement with which we regard the medieval concern about the distance to the edge of the world. Chapter 41 Phenomenization 2 Finite and Unbounded Any finite and unbounded system of n apparent dimensions must actually have n plus n over 2 dimensions for closure. Consider the bending of a two-dimensional sheet through a third dimension to create a finite and unbounded two-dimensional spherical surface, for example. Our universe consists of a four-dimensional surface, comprising three dimensions of space and one of time, which achieves closure by bending through a two-dimensional plane of imaginary time. The plane of imaginary time thus lies orthogonal to our observed four-dimensional surface. Commentary 41 We concede that we have adopted a finite and unbounded universe as an act of faith in our own finite and unbounded imagination. Neurocosmology sets the limits of cosmology. However, this model at least has the virtue of supplying an answer to what lies outside of the universe and also what lies inside of it. Outside of the universe lies the ANA or ANA direction of future imaginary time which we may conceive of as having unlimited duration and information content or content but no space matter or energy Inside the hyperspherical four-dimensional surface of the universe lies the kata or kata direction of imaginary time of necessarily limited length. This asymmetrical or asymmetry creates entropy and irreversibility and an apparent arrow in real time as the imaginary future contains more probabilities than the imaginary past. Chapter 42 Phenomenization 3. Thrice upon a time. Time has three dimensions, as does space. We cannot see any of the time dimensions. A clock of or calendar measures the passing of time equally well in all three, just as a rule measures distances in any of the three spatial dimensions with equal ease. Any apparent conceptual problems and mysteries associated with imaginary time disappear when you realize that you can only experience one immeasurably small instant consisting of all three temporal dimensions. Classical and relativistic calculations and expectations and common sense model past and future events along the dimension of ordinary time whilst magical and quantum calculations and expectations model probabilistic events on the plane of imaginary time orthogonal to ordinary time. Commentary 42 Two dimensions, a plane, of imaginary time provides a field in which many possible pasts and futures can exist as probabilities. They also provide unlimited possible parallel universes to the present moment which cannot interact with each other or us. A single dimension of imaginary time would only allow a single possible alternative event. Three dimensions of time also arise from general considerations of symmetry and can also supply an explanation of the properties of so-called fundamental particles 
as we shall show in the Spin Warp chapters. Chapter 43, Phenomenization 4, Imaginary Time. Tangible phenomena readily submit to a measurement with so-called real numbers. Thus, for example, we can have four apples, or minus four apples, if we happen to owe you four. Although time has little tangibility, we persist in measuring it with real numbers, even though for advanced scientific purposes, we get better results by measuring time as an imaginary component of Minkowski space. Imaginary numbers appear as the square root of minus one, designated i, raised by some factor, thus, 1i, 23i, and negative 127i represent imaginary numbers. As imaginary numbers measure intangible phenomena so well, less confusion would have arisen if mathematicians had called them intangible instead. Human perception and real numbers have tended to reduce the enormity of the whole of intangible time to a thin stream that we call real time. Consequently, we have to use the rather weird mathematics of imaginary numbers if we wish to add the entirety of time back on to the convenient abstraction of so-called real time. Commentary 43. Memory and limited imagination create so-called real time by picking out a thin stream of dubious casuality from the intangible immensity all around us. Paradoxically, the convenient fiction of one-dimensional real-time arises from our imagination, but the greater reality of the three-dimensional temporal continuum has to bear the somewhat derosity, or derosory, label of imaginary. To anyone who has so completely missed the point of all this that he asketh, Where lieth this imaginary time? we reply. Where lieth your real time? Where lieth all those things that you might do tomorrow? Where lieth all those things that you might have done yesterday? And where lieth both of those histories that contribute to the results of the double slit experiment in quantum optics? Chapter 44 in Ontology 1 Non Being. For those who would like to take the short and dangerous path to Taoist anti-ontology, nothing has being. Adjust your mind. You have a serious fault in the linguistic programs which structure your thought, which can have your effective intelligence. Commentary 44. Attempt to describe being, and you can only actually describe doing. We observe only doing. We never observe being, existence, or essence. All phenomena ourselves included, consist of processes, not of things, performing processes. Language lets us down badly. The false concept of being acts as a word virus, scrambling our thoughts, for nothing consists of other than what it does. I think, therefore I think that I think nothing more. The word virus, I am, lies at the root of the mental diseases we call religion. I am that I am, said Moshe, speaking amongst himself as Jehovah, thus making four mistakes simultaneously. You cannot achieve a state of being, but you can achieve a surprising choice of states of doing. Nothing is anything else, although many events resemble or look like others. Every use of the word is conceals a loss of information and a reinforcement of narrow views and prejudice. Chapter 44, An Ontology 1, Non-Being For those who would like the short and dangerous path to Taoist anti-ontology, nothing has been, or nothing has being, adjust your mind. You have a serious fault in the linguistic programs which structure your thought, which can have your effective intelligence. Commentary 44 Attempt to describe being, and you can only actually describe doing. We observe only doing. We never observe being, existence, or essence. All phenomena ourselves include, consist of processes, 
not of things, performing processes. Language lets us down badly. The false concept of being acts as a word virus. Scrambling our thoughts for nothing consists of our other than what it does. I think, therefore, I think that I think nothing more. The word virus I am lies at the root of the mental diseases we call religion. I am that I am, said Moshe, speaking amongst himself as Jehovah, thus making four mistakes simultaneously. You cannot achieve a state of being, but you can achieve a surprising choice of states of doing. Nothing is anything else, although many events resemble or look like others. Every use of the word is conceals a loss of information and a reinforcement of narrow views and prejudice. Chapter 46 An Ontology 3 Anti-Spell 1 The Ritual To attack the spell of being requires cunning. Use stealth and deviousness and paper to assault the enemy's vulnerable extremities. Write without any tense of the verb to be. Are, am, is, was, be, out, demons, out! Commentary 46 The word virus of being does not submit easily to defeat, yet on paper, after some struggle, one may start to roll back the enemy. As it retreats, you notice the enormity of the territory it once occupied. Vast areas of assumption dissolve into fresh and fluid thought. Every careless use of the word am, arc, is, was, and be reveals, upon correction, a wealth of ingrained assumptions and lost information content. I believe arc meant to be R. The archetypal mythological gods of magic usually took credit for inventing words and writing, language structures, perception, thought and belief. Language thus creates our reality, but language can suffer from viral attack and initiate disease in our thoughts. Beware of the enormous sorcery contained in these seemingly innocuous anti-spells. They can render your binocular in the land of the blind. An Ontology 4 Anti-Spell 2 The Ritual Having fought the virus of being to a standstill on paper, press the attack with spoken word. Eliminate being from speech. Precise speech begets precise thought, though most people assume the obverse. Pause to rephrase when temptation occurs, and risk the appearance of wisdom. Rephrase all mistakes if only mentally afterwards. Only extreme vigilance guarantees liberation from the negative magic of being. Group Ritual in conversation, agree to prompt each other to rephrase all inadvertent anagnostic statements. Most of the nonsense that passes for philosophy, ideology, and religion then miraculously disappears. Commentary 47. Battle Plan The table on here represents this. Part 1, an ontology, going up to writing, going up to language. An ontology bends around writing into language as step 2. Above language is thought. Going around language, from an ontology, all the way at the bottom, is step 3, going to thought. So we have an ontology, 1, writing, language, thought, and then finally, at the top, is the model of reality. Anti-spells 1 and 2 should roll back the enemy and crumble the false model of reality. However, if resistance stiffens, launch anti-spell 3. Eliminate being from your internal dialogue. Chapter 48 Practics 1 Three Conjurations for More As the chaos monasticism exercise of the wand proved so successful and popular, and no book on magic seems complete without offering something practical to challenge the aspiring magician, we present operations of the other three classical elemental weapons. Commentary 48 
As a spur to general proficiency and accomplishment, the current Sajalum, or S-H-A-J-A-L-O-M, square root one degrees, of the pact hath agreed that pact members who achieve a high standard of work with the operations of the four classical elemental weapons may present themselves, their records, and their instruments to a magus of the pact for possible accreditation as master of arms. Chapter 49. Practics 2. The Chaos Cyber Zoo. Purpose. To evoke and use magical servitors. Daily Observances. The Lesser Observances. 1. A proclamation of intent suitably worded. 2. Carry the pentacle at all times. 3. Visualizatory evocation of servitors, image or images, onto the pentacle and dispatch of servitors to some work of divination or enchantment twice in each 24-hour period. The greater observances, 1. All of the lesser observances, 2. Two further evocations spaced equally around a 24-hour period. The extreme observances, 1. All of the greater observances, 2. The replacement of one of the visualizatory evocations with a full ritual evocation of the magician's devising to include a spoken address to the servitor, etc., etc. Commentary 49. The magical operation of the pentacle or disc, as with all the other instruments, should take place over a prearranged number of continuous days, after which the magician may inscribe the instrument with a number marking the length and intensity of the work. Thus, 213 represents 13 days of greater observance, 33 shows 3 days, extreme, and so on. The magician may either evoke up to a maximum of four servitors, which may have only astral shapes, or commit the entire operation to the creation and use of a multi-purpose Eidolon, having a previously prepared material basis. Chapter 50. Practice 3. The Jihad of Chaos. Purpose. To increase vitality and martial fervor, and to attack offending forces. Daily Observances The Lesser Observances 1. A Proclamation of Chaos Warriorhood Worded to Taste 2. Carry the Magical Dagger at All Times 3. Half an Hour of Hard Physical Exercise 4. Half an Hour's Practice with Martial Arts and or Weapons 5. Cow Bolt One Enemy Target The Greater Observances 1. All of the lesser observances, two, one half hour vigil with dagger and martial meditation before dawn, three, cow bolt a second enemy target. The extreme observances, one, all of the greater observances, two, a full red magic war ritual. This may include one or both cow boltings. Commentary 50. The magician should, if possible, prepare the magical dagger by hand. Most conveniently, take the blade of a metal file and heat it glowing on a bed of charcoal, whilst fanning the embers furiously. Then allow slow cooling. Grind down to the shape of a blade with a second file. Reheat to cherry red and then quench to retemper. Fashion and fit a guard and handle. Pass the used second file to a worthy colleague. To cow bolt a suitable anti-chaotic institution or group, prepare a suitable sigil, visualize it astrally onto the dagger, and astrally hurl the resulting missile at the target, alternately hurl the dagger physically at a symbolic image of the target with full gnosis. Chapter 51. Practice 4. The Void of Chaos. Purpose. To seek inspiration or augury daily observances. The lesser observances. 1. A proclamation of intent to access the chaotic void, suitably worded. 2. Bear the chalice concealed with you at all times, except during an exposure. 3. Perform a quiet mass of chaos B, omitting the circle dance and using distilled water as sacrament. 4. 
After the mass, perform chalice gazing for half an hour. 5. Expose the chalice during the hours of sleep. The greater observances. 1. All of the lesser observances. 2. A further half hour of chalice gazing. Devote half of the gazing time to achieving voidness and half to visions. The extreme observances. 1. All of the greater observances. 2. A second mass of chaos B, preferably in the middle of a sleep period. And 3. A further hour of chalice gazing. Commentary 51. The magical operation of the chalice completes the four workings of the classical elemental weapons. The magician should, if possible, create a chalice by hand, although this presents a challenge. When beating a disc of copper or silver, remember that both metals tend to harden with cold hammering, and thus periodic heating can ease the task. Inscribe the chalice with the results of the work as for the wand, dagger, and disc. To perform a chalice exposure, leave the instrument outside the place of sleeping somewhere, secure like a roof or a garden, and perform augury or meditation upon any contents found afterwards. To seek voidness or flow of vision, fill the chalice with dark liquid and gaze into it. Chapter 52 Spin Warp 1 Prologue Particle physics provides additional evidence for the existence of three-dimensional time. Visual analogy quickly fails below the level of the atomic scale, and thus the word particle will henceforth appear in parenthesis, as the events which we call fundamental particle interactions, by virtue of our inability to break them down into anything simpler, do not really correspond to the behavior of tiny billiard balls or to anything else that we can visualize. Fundamental particles occur in two classes, matter, fermion, particles, and energy, boson, particles. Within these classes, particles exhibit or do not exhibit characteristics called color, charge, and family. Interestingly, these three characteristics all have three possible values, and three possible negative values. Additionally, all observed fundamental particles have a spin, and probably all fermions but not all bosons exhibit a mass. Commentary 52 The observed structure of the universe, and indeed our ability to observe it at all, depend crucially on the ability of fermions, with identical characteristics to resist interpenetration, whilst any number of bosons can occupy the same space. Thus we cannot easily walk through brick walls, although we can observe them at a distance. We shall address this profound mystery later on. By definition, a fundamental particle can have no component parts. Thus, its characteristics must either arise from more fundamental components that we have failed to find, or from the behavior of the particle itself. Particles have spins which we can quite easily measure. For example, in the phenomena of light polarization. Spin warp theory contends that the particle characteristics of color, charge, and family arise from spins having imaginary time components. We advance this hypothesis in support of our contention that imaginary time provides a powerful description of magical phenomena and thus has as much reality as anything else that we choose to call real. Chapter 53 Spin Warp 2 Fundamental Fermions the cascades of particles which appear in our accelerators and in cosmic ray impacts comprise only four observed fundamental fermionic types. One type of quark has a single unit of charge or anti-charge. The other type of quark has two or minus two units. Electrons have three units of charge or anti-charge, normally designed plus one or minus one. Neutrinos can carry no charge and only reversed spin characterizes the corresponding anti-neutrinos. All fundamental fermions have a single unit of spin, designated plus or minus half. All fermions carry one, two, or three units of the family characteristic, and quarks can have any one of the characteristics called color. Virtually all the matter we observe around us consists only of quarks, from the first family combined to form proton and neutron quark triplets orbited by the first family electrons. 
Although large numbers of antineutrinos fly through our bodies every second to negligible, negligible effect, antiparticles seem otherwise very elusive, and the universe would, on the surface of it, not appear to need any of the heavier quarks and electrons from families 2 and 3 to do what it does. Commentary 53 Although particle accelerators can make fermionic antiparticles, and a few show up in cosmic ray showers, strong evidence exists for the virtual non-existence of any substantial amounts of antimatter in the universe. We shall address this puzzle later. The apparently superfluous triplication of matter particles in families 2 and 3 yields a strong clue that the universe has a higher dimensionality than the ordinary 3 of space and 1 of time although the rare heavy quarks and electrons play little or no part in the formulation of galaxies, stars, planets, or people. They seem to exist as a consequence of the six-dimensional framework which supports the behavior of ordinary matter in spin-warp theory. Intuition Look out for some particularly exciting unpleasant applications of the heavy electrons in the initiation of nuclear fusion within your lifetime. Chapter 54, Spin-Warp 3 Fundamental Buzzins Buzzins or energy particles transmit forces between fermion or matter particles in addition to the familiar quanta or particles of light and electromagnetic radiation which carry charge between charged fermions. Two other buzzins called gluons and weak force buzzins also carry forces. Conventional theory describes gluons as carrying a color anticolor force and it models at least some weak force buzzins as electron antineutrinos or anti electron neutrino pairs, and it suggests the possible existence of gravitons and Higgs particles to transmit gravity and confer mass, respectively. All bosons, with the possible exception of the unobserved graviton and Higgs, exhibit two units of spin, designated plus one or minus one. Spin warp theory contends that all bosons consist of particle antiparticle pairs and that gravitation and mass arise f not from as yet undiscovered bosons, but from spin distortions in the fabric of six-dimensional space-time. Commentary 54 Physicists have long puzzled over one half of the answers yielded by Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism, which include light. Whilst the equations describe the behavior of such radiation very elegantly and accurately, they also yield an obverse set of solutions for radiation, apparently going backwards in time, an advanced wave. Theoreticians quietly discard such solutions for apparent want of any corresponding observational reality. Spin warp theory fully concurs with both sets of solutions to Maxwell's equations. It describes light, for example, either as quanta consisting of particle-antiparticle pairs or exactly equivalently in terms of the antiparticle as time-reversed particle model as a retarded wave from a transmitter stimulating an advanced wave from a receiver which travels backwards in time to the transmitter. Every little bit of light brings its own little bit of darkness with it to balance the books. This renders light intangible and allows it to pass through itself. Chapter 55, Spin Warp 4, Hyperspins If we designate the spatial direction of propagation interaction measurement of a particle as the z-axis and the two directions of imaginary time as a and b, then in addition to the experimentally verified xy chirality spin about the z-axis, we can also have the following. 1. Spins about the z-axis involving rotation in time dimensions, t over ab, a over bt, and b over at. 2. Spins about any of the three equivalent time axes, see chapter 56, in involving rotation in space and time dimensions, xy over a, xy over b, xy over t. And 3. Spins about any of the three equivalent time axes involving the z-spatial dimension and two time dimensions, z over ab, z over tb, z over ta. These three types of spin correspond to the observed particle properties of color, charge, and family respectively. As each of these spins involve a dimension and a plane, we observe two orthogonal phenomena, 
color charge and color magnetism for the first type and electro charge and magnetic charge for the second type. We await elucidation of the corresponding orthogonal vectors of the third family type of spin. For clarity, we omit the ordinary XY spatial spins and the three Z time spins, which give family characteristics from the table in the commentary, and henceforth replace the word particle with spin warp. Commentary 55. Types of spin warp. Here is the table as presented. Spin warp type, color spin present or absent, charge and name. Spin warp type 1. Color spin present or absent, zero. Charge, zero. Name, neutrino. Spin warp type two. Color spin present or absent, zero. Charge, plus or minus one. Name, half photons. Spin warp type three. Color spin present or absent, zero. Charge, plus or minus two. Name, question. Spin warp type four. Color spin present or absent, zero. Charge, plus or minus 3. Name, electrons, Z boson. Spin warp type 5. Color spin present or absent, check. Charge, 0. Name, half gluons. Spin warp type 6. Color spin present or absent, check. Charge, plus or minus 1. Name, quarks, down, strange, bottom. Spin warp type 7. Color spin present or absent, check. Charge, plus or minus 2. Name, quarks, up, charm, top. Spin warp type 8. Color spin present or absent, check. Charge, plus or minus 3. Name, question mark. Spin warps 3 and 8 await discovery. Spin warp 3 awaits discovery. The Z boson consists of an electron anti electron pair, but spin warp 8 probably requires more energy for its creation in fermionic or bosonic form than current devices can deliver. We have yet to discover any fundamental fermionic spin warp carrying more than one of the three color spins. Energy requirements again probably prohibit this. Chapter 56, Spin Warp 5, The Indistinguishability Principle. Although we can define arbitrary axes to separate space into three dimensions, we must never forget the arbitrary nature of such convenient distinctions. Height at the poles of the Earth lies orthogonal to height at the equator. For example, the universe as a whole does not appear to favor any particle spatial direction. An analogous situation exists with respect to time except that with the three dimensions of time we have no perceptual equipment or instruments with which to define coordinate axes. As all perceptual equipment or instruments only register instance of now, we can only measure or estimate scalar quantities of time such as plus 10 minutes or 10 minutes ago. Thus, when we examine the hyperspins of the fundamental spin warps, we have no reference direction with which to discriminate among T, A, and B. All temporal vectors have the same scalar values to us, although they will profoundly affect spin warp interactions. So, for example, we cannot distinguish which spins about the z axis, t over ab, a over bt, or b over at, give rise to the arbitrarily des designated red, green, or blue type of strong nuclear interaction. This indistinguishability has profound philosophical consequences. See the commentary. Commentary 56. Heisenberg's celebrated uncertainty principle at first appeared merely to set a limit on possible knowledge. Subsequent investigations showed that various pairs of characteristics suffered from the same uncertainty relationship. Soon it became apparent that the universe could only do what it does, if and only if. Uncertainty applied to the phenomena themselves rather than to limits on our ability to perceive them. Thus, uncertainty became elevated to full-blooded indeterminacy. Casuality died, and chaos measurable only by probability ruled the universe. Now, in terms of the indistinguishability principle, the behavior of the universe appears chaotic because we have no perceptual equipment or instruments to distinguish among the three temporal dimensions whose collective effect thus appears to us as probability. 
If, as appears the case, the universe itself makes no distinction, then chaos reigns, and we can define magic as the science and art of forcing time into desired patterns by will and perception. Towards the close of the 20th century, it appears, to the best of our understanding, that we inhabit an indifferent, if not hostile, universe, devoid of any justice or meaning other than that which we choose to create. Thus it falls to all of us to create these things, or the reverse of these things, and to accept or to attempt to modify the consequences. No truth, every possibility. Chapter 57 Spin Warp 6 Exclusion The Z-Time family spins of all spin warps correspond to their spatial displacements in the direction of propagation over interaction over measurement. The magnitude 1, 2, or 3 of this spin denotes family group only. The sign of the spin denotes the orientation of the ZT spin only. Thus, fermion matter spin warps have a spatial displacement and resist interpenetration, preventing you from walking through brick walls. Buzzin energy spin warps have family spin anti spin configurations which negate their spatial displacement allowing any amount of radiation to occupy the same place, and thus allowing you to see across the room, or to see Andromeda, or to pack as many photons into a laser beam as you can afford. Imaginary time makes all this possible. Quod erat demonstratum. Hopefully. Commentary 57 Physicists who have read this far with mounting paradigm strain may now want to see some blood and surviving magicians may perhaps question the point of the whole extravagant detour. For the physicists, we offer the potentially testable prediction that neutrinos will not mutually annihilate against antineutrinos, but that both neutrinos and antineutrinos will only mutually annihilate against themselves in head-on collisions. This may well explain the neutrino deficit. We also offer the intuition that the total number of all spins in the universe remains constant at zero. This looks much less ugly than a matter antimatter symmetry. We hope that we have offered modern magicians evidence for a believable explanation of how magic can happen. Personally, we have to admit that we need it very badly in the scientific age. Mystics may find something of interest in the afterward. Overleaf. Chapter 58, Spin Warp 7 Afterward Within Spin Warp Theory, all three dimensions of time contribute equivalently to those almost unimaginable events that we can call fundamental particles or spin warps. Somehow this symmetry seems to break when we apply measurement and thought to our apparent reality, and we end up with a rather diminished view of time. It seems that we can perceive only one point, like instant of time, and thus when we attempt to join up all those tiny points by effort of memory or expectation, we end up with a one-dimensional line instead of the mighty solid structure of bifurcating possibility that surrounds us. Do spin warps consist of distortions in the fabric of space-time, or does space-time arise from the effects of spin warps? Or does the almost incomprehensible reality lie in the equivalence of these two statements? Events co consist only of their doing. Commentary 58. Time has width. Our inability to experience more than a tiny fraction of the length of time directly mirrors our inability to experience its width. More things probably happen in the width of time than our sanity could possibly cope with. Do you realize that in some of the futures of the moment when you read this, you could die or have an orgasm within three minutes, or maybe both if you start now? Chapter 59, about the author. The publishers requested this. The author values ideas above personality and thus, for example, prefers to read science fiction rather than soap opera. The author experimented with mediocrity until the age of 25 and then decided the excellence offered better opportunities. The author still takes his view at 43, despite frequent exhaustion. The author chooses to maintain an antique and idiosyncratic code of chivalry, honor, and heroism in an era largely devoid of such things, just for the antinomian fun of it. The author values 
unique, uniqueness in an era of mass production and consumption and value self-made or at least handmade artifacts above all others. The author captained the magical pact of the Illuminates of Thanateros for a decade and derived immense satisfaction from the progress made in the theory and practice of magic during this period, but grew to despise the slavish imitation and treachery with which many mortals seek to advance themselves. Commentary 59 the author does not wish to burden others with the task of emulating the multiple eccentricities of his lifestyle, sexuality, dress, hairstyle, or manicure. We leave that to the Aleister Crowleys of this world. Thus, without photographs or style tips, we arrive at the end. Chapter 60. Epilogue. After five years of struggle, we wrote this book in a frenzy, to the accompaniment of thunderous music partly for the exhilaration of doing so, but mainly in the hope of reaching a few persons of like minds. The magical pact of the Illuminatis of Thanateros, which body already contains a number of like minds, provides the following contact addresses. BM 8482, London, WC1N3XX, England. Caput Corvi, Postfach, 303, A1131, Vienna, Austria. IOT, P.O. Box 17995, Irvine, California, 92623, USA. We have a zillion things to do now, so don't expect another book until the next millennium. We will pass all correspondence to the pact, except perhaps for particularly pertinent comments on spin warp theory. Further items of interest. Labor Null and Psychonaut by Peter J. Carroll, Samuel Weiser, Inc. 1987, ISBN 0877286396. Labor Chaos by Peter J. Carroll, Samuel Weiser, Inc. 1992, ISBN 0877287422. Prime Chaos by Phil Hine, Chaos International, 1993, ISBN 0952132001. Condensed Chaos, an introduction to Chaos Magic by Phil Hine, New Falcon Press Publications, Temple, AZ, Arizona, 1995, ISBN 156184117X.